Alright, we've got a Diablo playthrough with minimal commentary for those that are interested in the story of Diablo 1 and what took place before Diablo 2 without the uh, garbage retconning that happened in Diablo 3. So if you are interested, stick around and check it out. My friend, stay a while and listen. The witch, Adria, is an anomaly here in Tristram. She arrived shortly after the cathedral was desecrated, while most everyone else was fleeing. She had a small hut constructed at the edge of town, seemingly overnight, and has access to many strange and arcane artifacts and tomes of knowledge that even I have never seen before. Okay, if you're wondering why I quit the game here, it's because the dead, dying guy in front of the cathedral was not there. If he's not there, it means you don't have the butcher quest in your game. Some quests are random, although besides this one, I don't know which ones are and which ones are not. Please, listen to me. The Archbishop Lazarus, he led us down here to find the Lost Prince. The bastard led us into a trap. Now everyone is dead, killed by a demon he called the Butcher. Avenge us! Find this Butcher and slay him, so that our souls may finally rest. Oh, 
Over here. Not everyone in Tristram has a use, or a market, for everything you'll find in the labyrinth. Not even me, as hard as that is to believe. Sometimes only you will be able to find a purpose for some things. I know more than you think about that grizzly fiend. His little friends got a hold of me and managed to get my leg before Griswold pulled me out of that hole. I'll put it bluntly. Kill him before he kills you and adds your corpse to his collection. What ails you, my friend? I really don't understand why Ogden stays here in Tristram. He suffers from a slight nervous condition, but he is an intelligent and industrious man who would do very well wherever he went. I suppose it may be the fear of the many murders that happen in the surrounding countryside, or perhaps the wishes of his wife that keep him and his family where they are. By the light I know of this vile demon. There were many that bore the scars of his wrath upon their bodies when the few survivors of the charge led by Lazarus crawled from the cathedral. I don't know what he used to slice open his victims, but it could not have been of this world. It left wounds festering with disease, and even I found them almost impossible to treat. Beware if you plan to battle this fiend. Hello, my friend. Stay a while, poor Farnham. Here's a disquieting reminder of the doomed assembly that entered into the cathedral with Lazarus on that dark day. He escaped with his life, but his courage and much of his sanity were left in some dark pit. He finds comfort only at the bottom of his tankard nowadays. But there are occasional bits of truth buried within his constant ramblings. It seems that the Archbishop Lazarus goaded many of the townsmen into venturing into the labyrinth to find the king's missing son. He played upon their fears and whipped them into a frenzied mob. None of them were prepared for what lay within the cold earth. Lazarus abandoned them down there left in the clutches of unspeakable horrors to die. Well, what can I do for you? A good man who puts the needs of others above his own. You won't find anyone left in Tristram, or anyone else for that matter, who has a bad thing to say about the healer. I saw what Farnham calls the Butcher, as it swathed a path through the bodies of my friends. Ah, oh, he swung a cleaver as large as an axe, hewing limbs and cutting down brave men where they stood. I was separated from the fray by a host of small screeching demons, and somehow found the stairway leading out. I never saw that hideous beast again, but his blood-stained visage haunts me to this day. Thank goodness you've returned. Much has changed since you lived here, my friend. All was peaceful until the Dark Riders came and destroyed our village. Many were cut down where they stood, and those who took up arms were slain or, or dragged away to become slaves, or worse. The church at the edge of town has been desecrated and is being used for dark rituals. The screams that echo in the night are inhuman, but some of our townsfolk may yet survive. Follow the path that lies between my tavern and the blacksmith's shop to find the church and save who you can. Perhaps I can tell you more if we speak again. Good luck. Thank goodness you be... Can a fellow drink in peace? If I was you, and I ain't, but if I was, 
I'd sell all that stuff you got and get out of here. That boy out there, he's always got something good, but you gotta give him some gold, or he won't even show you what it's got. Big, big cleaver, killing all my friends. Couldn't stab him, had to run away. Couldn't save them. Trapped in a room with so many bodies. So many friends. I sense a soul in search of answer. To a man who only knows iron, there is no greater magic than steel. The blacksmith Griswold is more of a sorcerer than he knows. His ability to meld fire and metal is unequaled in this land. The butcher is a sadistic creature that delights in the torture and pain of others. You have seen his handiwork in the drunkard Farnham. His destruction will do much to ensure the safety of this village. will be avenged. The sanctity of this place has been fouled.
I gotta pawn some of this stuff. What can I do for you? Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen.
Well, what can I do for you? In Diablo 1, one of the big differences is that after you kill monsters and even if you leave the floor, they do not respawn at any point in the game. So if you don't fully clear each floor, you will end up uh, losing experience over time. You won't hit uh, as high of a level as you could otherwise, and you may miss out on some gear. Uh, since I just got to floor 2, I'm going to try and keep these around 30 minutes each. And I may do some inventory stuff off screen. I haven't decided yet. Uh, Alright, well thanks for watching. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. And remember to give them the D.